Hi everybody, it's Monday and we're talking about stuff. I know it's not our usual Thursday, but um, instead of procrastinating, I'm just gonna do it now. It's my new approach to life. Anyway, if you are new here, I am Jennifer Mackey Mary, owner of Apple & Pear Wardrobe, and I'm on a mission to make style simple for every woman. And today I wanna talk to a very special little corner of my world, and that is you women who own businesses. I am so passionate about women owning businesses for a lot of reasons. Um, Number one, I think that it's really hard after you've had kids to go back into the corporate world and not be able to be there when they when they need you to go to a school activity or to feel guilty for taking time off or, you know, all those things. So um, owning your own business is one way that you can make your schedule work for you. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you work less because Lord knows you don't. But you business owning babes know what I'm talking about is that you get to kind of get to design your own life, which is great. But um I started Apple and Pear, uh, what, like six years ago almost? Six years ago. And I really started working with stay at home and really stay at home moms who were kind of coming out of that baby haze. And that's exactly the point that I was at. I, um, I had a one year old when I started a company based on looking your best, which that's dumb. Um, but I kind of started with these women when they were coming out of the baby haze too. And they, as they went back to work and then left the workforce again and decided to start their own companies, I've sort of developed this little niche of women entrepreneurs who need to align their look with their brand, who know that, you know, yoga pants can't be the, um, the only thing you wear all the time. I know a lot of us wish we could, but no. Um, and they needed to create a look that really enhanced their brand, that told people who they are, that um, got rid of any disconnect. I always say that aligning your look with your brand is about eliminating disconnect and confusion. So today I wanna to talk about three things that your look needs to be, right? Number one, your look needs to be consistent with your pricing. Now I've worked with a couple of clients who have got it a little wrong on, on both ways, right? So the first client I wanna share with you, um, she was leaving her corporate job, she was becoming a life coach, um, and she wanted to land really high-end clients. And she wanted to do it in a wardrobe from Kohl's. That isn't gonna happen, right? If you wanna land the big fish, you need, need to have the big wardrobe. So unfortunately, she was just starting out, she didn't have the money to go buy a $1,000 bag and $700 shoes and you know $2,000 dresses. So we, you know, we went to Macy's, we went to Nordstrom, we went to um, Nordstrom Rack, and we put together a really good looking wardrobe that looked expensive, but wasn't. And all of a sudden she felt, she felt confident, she felt connected, she felt um, like she belonged, right? When she went to go meet a really high-end executive, um, she felt like she was really, she deserved to be in the same room. So that is number one. You've gotta have your pricing aligned with your, with your um, your look. The second time that I worked with a client who didn't have pricing aligned with her look was the girl who st sold Stella and Dot, which I love, I love me some Stella and Dot, but she wanted to be the budget Stella and Dot girl. Now, for those of you who know, Stella and Dot sells like $200 fashion jewelry, which is, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I have a few pieces, I love them very much, but I wouldn't call it a budget look. So here she wanted to show people how to do it on a budget and it just didn't connect. So what we had to do for her, again, actually she changed, ended up changing jewelry lines to something that was a little bit more budget friendly because she realized that that's really where her heart was, was in helping women look good on a budget and that Stella and Dot, as wonderful and lovely and gorgeous as it is, didn't connect. So, you know, there's a couple ways to change it, but you have to figure out, is my look consistent with my branding? Um, I read an article, a few, I know, Janessa just commented on my necklace, which by the way is from Janessa, it's from Premier. Um, but I read an article a few years ago about what it's, this girl was writing about what it's like to work with a stylist. And she's in New York, and she said she paid $100 for a two hour consultation, which that's cheap, friends. That is super duper cheap. If you've worked with me, you know that I'm not that cheap. Um, but she said that this woman breezed in in her designer dress and Jimmy Choo heels. Okay. 
Designer dress and Jimmy Choo heels does not equal $100 consultation. There's a disconnect there. So oh, my light just went out again. Um, so what was happening is this woman was intimidated by this woman who, who came in in all of designer stuff. She felt like she was really um, being judged on her wardrobe. So you've just got to make sure that is the message that you're putting out consistent with your pricing. If you are wearing designer dresses and Jimmy Choo sh shoes, you should not be wearing or charging $100 for two hours. If you are charging $99 for two hours, go ahead and wear your jeans and a t-shirt because that's what people are expecting. So that's number one. Pricing needs to be aligned with your brand. Your look also needs to be aligned with your client. Are you dressing for your client? The to connect with your client. Now, I was at a networking event a couple summers ago, and there was this woman who was in super, super, super dated clothing, right? I was like, wow, haven't seen that since the 70s, early 80s, right? But we went around and we said what we did, and she works with elderly people. And I was like, yes, I get it. That is perfect. She kind of had, and she was young. I think she was probably in her 30s, but she kind of had this senior citizen vibe about her. Great, that was perfectly aligned. However, oh, I love that, Laura, thank you. Um, however, there are a lot of times where we are dressing for who we think we should be rather than dressing for our clientele. Um, when I shop with my stay-at-home moms, I feel really comfortable throwing on jeans and t-shirt and sneakers and a couple of cool pieces of jewelry and going out. However, when I have a corporate client or um, a client in the government, I feel like I you know, should step it up a little bit and maybe not wear graphic t-shirts. So it's not about changing you and who you are, it's just about adapting to, adapting to the situation. Especially you know, if you are on stage, if you are doing a presentation, find out who your audience is and then dress accordingly. Again, stay true to yourself, but be able to tweak it a little bit. Finally, um, your look needs to be aligned with your brand's energy. One mistake I see all the time, women at networking events, they dress to fly under the radar, right? So they wear their black pants and their solid sweater and no jewelry and plain flat shoes, and you can't tell anything about them. And sometimes I'll talk to people, they have super creative careers, they have super creative companies, but you would never know that from looking at them. So make sure that your look, if you have a creative company, dress creatively. If you have a very conservative company, dress conservatively. When people look at you, by the way, you have 10 seconds to make a first impression. And in 10 seconds, you really can't get very many words out. So how you look and what you're wearing makes a huge, huge um, impact on somebody. If you've only got that amount of time, make it work for you. Make your look be the first thing that speaks to people. I always tell my clients, my, my business owning clients, that your look is like a marketing assistant, right? That it's saying something, your marketing is saying something, is it saying the right thing? So when you go to a marketing event or a networking event, a luncheon, whatever it is, don't dress to fly under the radar. Don't dress not to be noticed. To me, that's crazy. I don't love those events. I'm, I'm actually a shy person, you may not believe that, but I don't love putting myself out there. However, if I took the time to get up, get off my couch, drive somewhere, park, meet new people, you better believe I want it to count. I want it to really have an impact um, and I want to get something out of the day and that's for people to know me and to um, me to know them and for them to know what I'm all about which is a company that is fun it's casual it's creative I want them to see that before they ever talk to me um, you know and sometimes like with a wardrobe stylist people might be very intimidated by that but when they see me you know in fun colored necklaces and a t-shirt they're like oh yeah no that's cool I could work with her so make sure that your brand's energy is aligned with your look and that it's actually saying well it's always saying something make sure it's saying the right thing so there you go um, Thank you, Laura, for the kind comments. I have a little download for you business owning babes. I'm gonna put it up there, and it is five pieces every boss babe needs in her wardrobe. I know you probably have my five pieces every casual wardrobe needs. I'll put that, I'll put that one in the comments. But up there, I'm gonna put five pieces every boss babe needs. If you own your own business, or if you have to go to those kinds of events, you know, networking stuff, even if you're, you know, even if you have a corporate job, these are the pieces that you need to have. So I'm gonna put that download up there, you can grab it. And it was nice talking to you on a Monday, and I'll see you later in the week. Bye.